All right, folks, I am in the car with Kevin Morrison. Hello, how are everybody? Yeah, and we are coming out of the Cleveland airport and we are heading to Salt Fork. I don't know if anybody's watching right now. If there's anybody uh, who is watching, who's going to the LBC this weekend, we, we are on our way. Woohoo! We're about two hours, three minutes from Salt Fork. So, yes, we will see you folks there. We're looking forward to this. We are going to have a blast. We are. Keep right in a quarter of a mile onto Interstate 480 That's... East toward Youngstown. Probably hear Kevin's GPS yep. going. Now keep right. Thank you very much, honey. Now it's <laughs> two hours. Two hours. All right. All right. Yeah, we're going to be there before you know it, folks. I don't see anybody watching, so that's okay. There'll be, a, there'll be another live video later. See you guys then. We are live again. Oh, here we go. I'm doing the live. We're getting rained on, but we're on our way to Salt Fork. We're less than an hour away. Kevin gave me one of these. This is one of the Abalone Spirit Carver necklaces. Just for Henry. Yeah, I appreciate it. It is raining. Hey, Miss Claudette. Oh. Hey, Trinetta. Hey. Hello, Paul. People coming on. We are live on the road. We're less than an hour from Salt Fork. Yeah, less than an hour. Listen to Super Tramp. <laughs> Listen to the Sirius Satellite Radio. Yep. Got some good tunes going, having a good time. Hello, Mark Para. <laughs> Don't want to be too loud. Hey, Trinetta. That's right. Yeah, she, she and her family are not going to be able to make it this oh. year. Yeah, she said she wasn't going to be able to make it, so... I'm glad she's able to join us. Yes. For for the Facebook Live, That's yeah. Right. And it's still important and in all that matters. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah we're, we're, like I say, we're less than an hour away from, from, from Salt Fork. Yep. It's not much further now. What we're is pretty, he, a raincoat and boots? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Hey, Chris. <laughs> Okay, well I'm gonna do I will I will I will have another video once we get close to Salt Fork. And so, you know what Henry always says. Y'all be good or be good at it. Alright guys. We are in we are in the Salt Fork area and watch your watch it. <laughs> watch where you're going now. We are in the Salt Fork region. We're close. We are very close. Very close. Yes. Somebody's watching right now. All right. Whoever it is, hello. Hello. Yeah. Still in the car with Kevin Morrison. All right. Hello, whoever's there. Woohoo. Yeah. We are so close. I recognize this area. Oh, yeah. Oh, I do, yeah. too. Oh, yeah. It's a little bit of a sharp turn here. i got to slow it down a bit. Yeah, we are just south of Cambridge. We have sharp turns in this area. We are oh, slowing down. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We are in the Salt Fork region, ladies and gentlemen. We are so close. We can taste it. That's right. <laughs> Hey Suzanne, Suzanne Ferencheck. Oh, hi hey. Suzanne. Woohoo! Yeah. We are in the Salt Fork region. Hey Steve Atkins. Alright. Boy, wind, long and winding road, Henry. <laughs> hey Barb, Barb Olvera's watching. Oh, hi Barb. Barb, Kevin says hello, hi, Barb. Barb. Barb is a sweetheart. Okay, Suzanne. We will have fun. Oh, yes, we will. Barb says hi, Kevin and All Henry. Right, good. Suzanne's going to be there tomorrow. Oh, good. Yeah, Barb says hi, Kevin and Henry. Right, here we are. Here. Hugh Gimlin. Oh, my gosh. Bob Gimlin's son. Oh, yes. Hugh. Hi, hey, Hugh. Hugh. Yeah. Barb says, I wish I was there with you guys. I know she does. I know oh, you do, Barb. We know, Barb. We, we know, know, sweetie. We wish you were here, too. We'll have a drink for you at the cabin party. We will. Yeah. Because she was here last year, wasn't yes, she? Yes, she was. Yeah. Yes. And we got to celebrate her birthday with her, which is 
her birthday is exactly on the 50th anniversary. And nice to see Hugh on there. Hello, Hugh. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Bob Gimlin's son. Yes. Yeah. Right on. Looks a lot like him, too. She <laughs> says, perfect. Barb says, perfect. <laughs> hey, Jenna. That's a friend of mine, Jenna Thorson. She right. was here a few years ago right. at the okay. conference. Great. Everybody's coming on. This is good. Yep. Oh, that's nice. I like that. I'm sure. Hey, Oscar, an old friend of mine. Right. Went to high school and college with. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, shoot. Yeah, we are in the Salt Fork region. We are, because it's long and winding roads, I remember. Oh, yeah. We're getting so close. Yeah, there's the store. There's the store. Yep, the, the, the Mr. G's. Mr. G's Center Market. They have a Bigfoot in there. They do. That's right, they do. Yep. Life size Bigfoot. All right, keep that in mind. <laughs> yep. I mean, we are just about. It says three point one miles. I think it's closer than that. I think so too. It says Salt Fork region. I think that navigation is all the sign. Oh, yeah. yeah. We are very close. Look how beautiful this area is. It is oh, my gorgeous. God. Oh, my God. Look at the house. <laughs> There's my garage right there. That's Kevin's. Garage. Okay, Hugh. He says, have fun, guys. Okay. Talk to you later. Bye, you. Yeah. Look at those flowers. Those are beautiful. Beautiful. I want that branch. That's my branch. <laughs> I that one, too. <laughs> yeah. With the old Chevys in there. Look at that house. Oh, my God. People got some money around here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and the This is a nice area through here. It is. I remember this area through here. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm familiar with this, this area. Is, this is nice. Yeah. Everything just. Look at that little cabin up there. I like that. Mm -hmm. Wow. This is great. I'm enjoying this. Oh, God. I know that uh, Scott Alba lives around here. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, Misty's. Uh... No, no, he's oh. not. No, he's. I was he used of, to come to the conference. I was thinking of Misty. <laughs> no, I. No relation to Misty. Oh, okay, dark. Okay, we're close. That's, I think it's part of Salt Fork Lake right there. Yep. We will see that as we go into the left. We sure will. So some turkey vultures gathering over yep. there. Wow. I think people are enjoying this, Henry. I think so. I think they enjoy it. Yep, because we're not far now. We are not very far. <clears throat> this is great. Here we go. This is good. We should be able to see that big sign, Salt Fork. <laughs> right, and be on the left. Yep. Yep. With the flag, a big tall pole, and some flags on the top. Yep. Actually, last year I slammed on the brakes. <laughs> <laughs> Coming in there. <laughs> Whoops. It says 0 0.9 miles, so it's not far now. Right. That's Deurassic. That's Deurassic over there. So Deurassic. yeah, it's coming up. It's coming up, like over this hill or somewhere. Yep, it's over the hill. Yep, that's. I think that's where they had the Finding Bigfoot Town Hall yes. when they were here. Yes. Yep. Anybody else come on that we haven't seen yet? No. Okay. All right, here we go. It's coming up. It's coming up, people. <laughs> We're about to enter. Matter of fact, here it comes. There it is. There it is. There it is. Way down there. Yeah, there's that sign. Yep. Okay, we just go to the left here. Oh, yeah. And when I pull in, I might even slow you down a bit. So the destination. Yep, there's a destination. Here we are, folks. There it is. Right. Salt Fork State Park. And we are go. here. There you go, Henry. You can take a shot. There you go. There you go. Yep. All right. Here we go. All right. We are here, folks. There will be more live video later, but I just wanted to let y'all see we were coming in Salt Fork. So there will be more video, more live video later. For one, thank Gabrielle and Mike Cole for putting this party on. Uh, Yay! 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 I'd like to also thank John Wilkes for being our show.
got old provider bringing to you. Whoop, whoop. I'd also like to thank, uh, oh, geez. someone gave me a bad Uber uh, thing and I'm not happy about it. Excuse me, sorry. I'd like to thank all my speakers, Cliff, Bobo, Tom, B, Ken, for coming and, and taking the time to coming here. Um, and then, but I'd also like to, uh, you know, thank uh, Caroline Curtis, too, for being such a great person. Yay! Uh, Caroline is the administrator for the BFRO, and uh, she is... You know, the things she does behind the scenes. She's not a stripper like you thought. <laughs> oh! 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 <laughs> but anyways, uh, you know, the things that she does for the organization and, and even for me, I mean, just all the things that I try to do for our Ohio team and, and, and the BFRO, she's kind of like a piece of it because without her, we couldn't get a lot of things done and a lot of things accomplished that we like to do. Here, here. Um, so thank you, Caroline, very much. Yay! Um, obviously, all of you for coming to the event. I know that, uh, you know, I know that this has been an emotional last year of time. There's been a lot of weird things happening in the Bigfoot world, but all I can say is this, is that people, we just need to move forward and go on. And uh, you know who, yep. you know, you know inside what the, what the truth really is and, and uh, what's you know good and bad and and so on and then and then of course our honored esteemed guest Tom Yamarone tonight. Yeah, Yams. Programs and postcards and stickers from last year's event because you know obviously uh, I wanted to make sure you get these and then obviously when you know obviously your health issue it was just one of those things that. A little stroke. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, you know he had a stroke on in February of 2016, it was, 17, 2017, and and I told him I remember talking to him on the phone and barely could understand what he was saying. I told him I said, "Yeah, but I need you to speak at the OBC," and uh, you know, and and you know he was very down, he was very depressed, you know, never thought anything would happen. I mean, he never thought he'd walk again, let alone drive again. But yet he's driving, he's walking. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, so, I mean, yeah. before you know it, once that cane is gone, I mean, he's mm -hmm. going to be just this totally new man. Yes. Um, and then, of course, with his support group, you know, Bobo, I mean, God, Bobo, you can't even just, what he does for you, Ann, Cliff, 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 his wife, Carly, <laughs> just seconded, and she would have been laughed if you interrupted. <laughs> 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 That, 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 Got the Ola family. I mean, always that support, always there to help. I mean, uh, yes, I understand. But, but so, anyway, hip, hip, no. to my friend Tom. Hip, hip, hooray! Hip, hip, hooray! Who's everyone? Yeah, I didn't tell you. Yeah. Take photos of him. For he's a jolly good fellow. Oh, for he's a jolly good fellow. For he's a jolly good fellow. Wish nobody can be now. <laughs>
You know, the night she was in the hospital, I went and saw her and her friend Lori. They called her from the party she was supposed to. It was her birthday party. They had the German chocolate cake right there, and they sang. All these people stoned off their mind, of course. <laughs> happy birthday. So I said, you know what? I want to make sure that she actually got a birthday cake for that year. Right on. So German right on. chocolates eat it all. So, yeah. We're all survivors. Exactly. Everybody here is amazing. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Dean. Yes. Enjoy yourself, you. everyone. Thank you. Woo! 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 Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> all right. We are here at the VIP dinner. And we're about to get an announcement. Or two. I'm I'm on Facebook Live. Facebook Live. Yeah. There's Ellen. <laughs> We're all in <happy> here. <laughs> Hey, oh, Kevin's watching too. <laughs> we got the CSRA folks over there. <laughs> yeah. No. <Never> <laughs> <laughs> no, Rowdy, this is Salt Fork State Park. <laughs> can, it, can you guys hear me over there? Can they stop? Turn quiet down. Mm -hmm. And then he talks a lot. Oh, you laugh a lot, so you laugh. <laughs> but, really? I should, but kids are in the room. Uh oh. <laughs> Thank you for coming to the. Uh, Friday VIP dinner of the Ohio Bigfoot Conference 2018. Um, I'm Mark DeWork. I'm the jerk that usually replies to all the emails and tries to hide who I am and never sign my name and things like that. So thank you very much for letting me be a jerk. Thank you. 
just impeccable, impeccable work. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a masterpiece. Right, Patrick? Right. <laughs> yeah, that's certification. But anyways, uh, thank you all for coming. Thank you all for supporting this event. Uh, I, what should I say? This is the year where I've just kind of been on a crazy train. You know what I mean? I've been a little paranoid. Um, say that. And uh, when you see a goodbye, there's no goodbye or romance for me. <laughs> you guys get the reference points, but uh, yeah. I'm sure most of you don't, but hey, that's the way it goes. But, uh, um, it's just been an interesting year, let's say, but uh, I, I'm so glad you guys decided to come back to the beautiful Salt Fork State Park, or in the, in the Salt, Salt Fork State Park Lodge. I think uh, I thought the food service went exceptionally well, and, and I know there's a few <laughs> because I know a lot of people complained over the years about having to drive into town, trying to find a place, find parking, and stuff like that. So I know it was a few dollars more this year to have it here, but, but a lot of people said just to not have to drive the 35 minutes there and the 35 minutes back was well worth it. So, so we could all stay here and not have to rush back to the lodge. Um, one thing I will say is that I have to thank uh, my executive assistant, uh, Gabrielle Cole, I know she's probably not here, she's probably setting up for the registration, but uh, uh, for, you know, with the idea of the early registration today from one to four, I thought that was a huge hit. It got a lot of people, your badges and checked in and things like that. So, uh, um, you know, thank you, Gabrielle. I, I, I know you're probably not here. Woo! Woo! Um, she kind of said to me, you know, all you got to do is show up and smile and wave. And I said, well, I don't typically smile and wave. It's more like smiling and, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I come from, you know, a family of zero tolerance. Right, Pat? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you laugh about, my lady? <laughs> <laughs> I do like your shirt, by the way. <laughs> it is. It's so cute and evil in the same breath. I went and ended up getting a dog. It's, imagine coming home, and lo and behold, I get this, I get this tag in a Facebook page. Uh, Mark Dwarf, I just want you to say, don't hate me. And I, yeah, she's putting her head down at the table right now. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, another cat. Chopsticks home for sure. That's it. So I walk in the house and what's sitting there staring at me, barking away uh. from this little white whatever that thing is. I mean, <laughs> Sauron and Lorda would have created a dog and it would have been like that. That's how evil it was. And uh, but lo and behold, my cats were very upset. I was very upset. I looked at the family and I just said, if you think for one second you're going to be picking up poo, I guarantee you this dog will be in an envelope. Oh, 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 sorry. Hit him with your cane. Yeah, that's right. You don't need that cane. Yes. I think that Tommy has gone through in the last year plus of his life, and it's just to see him walking, to see him driving again, yes, and just you know surviving, persevering, and I mean, I mean, obviously his lovely wife Marilyn, without her, it wouldn't be possible. See, she actually got to finally come and see, like, what is my husband doing with these events? <laughs> I mean, Marilee, can I just tell you something? He doesn't sleep like he's doing now. Uh -huh. and, you know, usually that fire pit down below is like <laughs> four in the morning, there'd be time. And so don't sit there and believe all the stories. It's all, if you need to get to come clean, I'll tell all. <laughs> so, um, Trust me. <laughs> anyway, so just a miracle, and I was just when, when Tom was sick, 
and you were really sick, and you could finally talk where you could at least halfway understand what I told him. I said, Tom, I need you to come to the Ohio conference and be a speaker. And he said, I can't do it. I said, no, you're coming to the Ohio conference and speaking in 2019. Dude, I, I, I just don't think, I, I don't think I'm ever going to walk in. I don't think I'm going to be myself. I said, Tom, you are coming to the Ohio Bigfoot Conference in 2019 and speak. Well, over a year later, look who's sitting there. Uh, yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. Well, I can't hold my hand the right way. But Tom, you know your songs. You know, use that as your motivation to, you know, you start playing music. Music is beauty. Music is just so special. And, uh, you know, music is a way to communicate and where everyone can, like, have that middle ground in life. And, uh, you know, through Tom's music, you know, through Bigfoot, through community, you know, he's delivered just like so far and so beyond of, of uh, you know, what you'd ever expect out of a person. And, and not only is, is Tom a, a great music man, he's a great big foot racer. He's super skeptical, his really feet on the ground. Yes, he's investigated tons of reports, but he's the first person to call out as a host. He's the first person to yell at you, don't send me a photo of a footprint without a unit of measure. Mm -hmm. Don't do it. Please, I mean, it just wastes time. So, so yes, I mean, if this, if Ozzy was going to do another trivia album, it would be the Tom Yammer on So, Tom, I'm so happy you're here. I love you, brother. Thank you for having me, and thank you all for supporting me. Yay! Woo! So, as we move on through the day, or this evening, uh, you know, things that we have to look at is obviously tomorrow's going to be pretty darn hectic, as we know. Obviously, the vendor area is going to be where it always is. So we actually expanded into the one little offshoot room, as you can see where the tables are. Um, there's going to be a lot of people here tomorrow. So, what I would suggest to all of you, because I advertise the Bigfoot flea market, as you saw me, notice I put one to seven, not 11 to seven. Well, obviously the vendor area will open up at 11 a.m. <laughs> Vendors are free to start setting up at 9. I would appreciate it no sales commence to 11. Because we got to give all the vendors fair opportunity to set up where they're not getting mobbed or packed with people. So be courtesy and just hold off. Um, and then like I say, if there's things you guys want, you better get it before the second wave comes. Because when the second wave comes, they're going to clean them out. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's going to be a lot of cool things. We have a lot of new vendors this year. Um, so you can have a lot of different choices. Um, also, uh, is Mike and Diana sorting here? They just showed up. So they'll have the t-shirts for you guys who everyone bought the t-shirts. Mike is my graphics guy. Look how beautiful those banners are. Remember, you got your shirt up. Stand up, Anna. Woo! Yeah! Oh, yes. yeah. He's modeling it. Um, looks great, by the way. I mean, it really does. I mean, Mike does it all, he volunteers his time, he doesn't have to do it, he does it because he's passionate, he loves this, this, this field, and he, and he loves his hobby. And, you know, and I will always say this to everyone in this room, if you're not having fun doing Bigfoot, don't do it. This is fun. Yeah. This, is, this is community. This is doing things we all enjoy. I tell I have a young lad over there, you know, I have dinner with him and his grandma, just, you know, no one wanted to sit with me, so I said, dude, where, where, where do I go? And so they said, you should hear me. But that was nice. Uh, but nice kid, he was telling me how his interest was in Bigfoot and everything like that, and I told him, I said, you know what? You're going to be going into high school, you're going to be doing all these things in life. I said, get your education, get your career set. Bigfoot is always going to be there, but Get yourself going, move, you know, move into adulthood, and then as you establish yourself in life, continue your research, your search, because you know to have a career in front of you, and then have a hobby in Bigfoot. And I'm not saying we don't have to be serious. I, and you know, some people say, well, hobby that means it's just fun. 
for fun, if you're not having fun, don't do it. Because <laughs> people, you know, I mean, I've seen so many people in the Ohio Bigfoot world and all the Bigfoot community, and I've known them all. Come and go. But, and the, usually the reason why they leave is because they're miserable. Well, they get miserable doing this, don't do it. This is fun, this is going camping, this is going hiking, this is learning about not just Bigfoot potential evidence, but it's also learning about the woods, it's learning about the ecology, the forest, everything about it. I mean, you guys, whoever follows me on Facebook, I know I'm born, but you know I love looking for big trees. Well, I actually found a maple tree in the park here that's going to be a state record. I mean, you know, that to me, that's huge. I found a pin oak, Coyote and I, we found a pin oak in, up near Lake Erie. Him and I were hiking in this one field, and he goes, dude, look at that spread way up there. And like on the top, so the just see this massive spread. We hiked down through this like 10 foot tall weeds down in the woods, and it was like, it was like this, the Moses part of the sea. It's mm -hmm. the biggest oak tree that I think I've ever seen, at least to that day. We go down to it, and dude, Kyle's a big boy. He climbs up on that tree. That branch is coming off or bigger than him. And uh, so we thought it was a white oak. And uh, so we kind of left it at that. We did some measurements. We sent it to the state. They said, well, you know, it's a nice thing, but it's not a white oak. White oak. It's a pin oak. You know, I think I want to look up and take a in pin oaks. But <laughs> you got to understand what I'm saying is that, yes, why we go look for evidence for Bigfoot, we're also looking for other things. And so if you learn the environment, learn everything about the ecology, the water, and everything about that, you're going to learn a lot more about it. So use that as a tool. You know, where, I mean, one of my favorite things to do is volunteer. Volunteer for the naturalists, you know, for the state, be a volunteer naturalist. When you go with these naturalists, and you listen to what they talk about. The stuff you can learn in one hour is more than you have learned in your whole okay, community. You, is that a phone call for me? <laughs> <laughs> is that a pizza or a tongue down? But, but no, you just all I'm saying is that use Bigfoot as that tool, that extension, to learn about everything else in the forest and also for good health. Because you know what? Hiking is one of my favorite things to do, as you know. And uh, so to just hike in the woods every day, to take the dog to follow oh, her. For a walk. <laughs> <laughs> he's a pretty darn good walker. He's doing six miles now. So I told Coyote, I said, dude, you're going to have to bring him at the path. Let's see, let's see how he does. And, uh, but, so I'll do one now. But, uh, so, anyways, and then of course, uh, all the great speakers. We have Ken Gerhard here. I mean, Ken's been. Yeah! <laughs> Yeah. Twenty years. Oh, so you got a twenty year veteran of the field and, and not just big but the cryptozoology as a whole. Um, and then obviously you have Cliff Berkman from Finding Bigfoot. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Woo! Yeah. 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 And maybe he's proud of it. You know, and, and like I say, you know, nerd had Bigfooting, that's fun. Yeah. Fun. You can be serious and fun in the same breath, but if you don't have fun doing it, it's not fun. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, you have Tom over there and Bobo. Uh, uh -huh. uh, Bobo, please understand, folks. Bobo was supposed to get into Cleveland at 9 o'clock on a non stop flight from San Francisco. He calls me up at the gate. Dude! Dude! You're not going to believe this. They canceled my flight, dude! <laughs> and like, we were, they were on the taxiway, number two for takeoff. And the flight crew didn't do a safety check. The plane had to go back to the gate, shut down completely the A cars, and then of course do the safety check. And by the time the safety check got cleared, they went and tried to back back out. Oh, now there was a, a flight delay to Frisco. Well, they got delayed so long they canceled the flight. Then, dude, I'm sitting there, this is dude, what am I gonna do? Well, eventually they flew him back to San Francisco, and then there were no more flights to get on to Cleveland. So he had to go to then to LA on the shuttle, as they call it. Then he flew the red eye and got to Cleveland at 6 30 in the morning yesterday. So when he got off the plane, he was like, dude, I'm tired, dude. So I said, okay. So I took him, took him to my house, and of course, what do you think Oliver did to him? Dude, you got one shut up, and it's like, so finally I took Oliver. Took him, out, took him out in the garage and 
changed into that. I changed into like a cat snorter <laughs> thing. It's like, yeah, I, I do my one mean female. It's like, do my crazy, do something about this. <laughs> but, but anyways, uh, so I mean, and he did sleep a few hours. I told him, dude, just because like, slept, he slept, I gave him a bed, he slept. And I went and walked. And of course, you know, how that walk went, I went three miles one way, coming back. About a mile and a half to go, Mordor opens up the rain and just pouring. I look at the dog, it's just like, oh, I'm just scared. I, I was wearing my glasses too, so they were all fogged in, and I'm just walking, looking at it. I just look at the dog and don't say a word. <laughs> <laughs> and then I get to the van, so I said, I'm soaking in shorts. I just pull my shirt off, throw that in the van. Pull my shorts off, and just in my underwear, I'm so wet. And so then I look over, and there's a grandma sitting in a window. <laughs> <shirt on. laughs> Uh, it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I was worried my phone was destroyed, but luckily the, the, the case I had saved it. So, so I did that, and then of course we come down. You know, so I was planning to get down here about two o'clock, and that'd be a good time. Yams it was already gone. Him and Merrily came in too that night. They were perfectly on time. You know, we had a good dinner, uh, and then uh, they went down. I told them where to go in Amish country and see all the Amish people. And did you get a cut of beer? Uh -huh. I was going to say Andy, but then we give him an Amish hat and he can act like <laughs> But then again, you know, yeah, he'd be better. What? <laughs> What's his name? Elmer? Oh, Phil. <laughs> I learned that when you walk, when you like horse trails, yeah. just wear a little necklace with Elmer's blue. The horse will not miss you. It's so serious. They go, that's the truth. I mean, I have a lot of Amish clients and all. But anyways, uh, so of course, uh, they made it down fine. And, I mean, literally, we're coming down. I figured I was go down 21 from like the Akron area to get down to about 21 because it's never has any traffic issues. Yeah. Oh boy! Really? I mean, there was an accident that was so bad that the Department of Transportation had four roads closed. They actually had DOT people blocking the roads, and I mean, we zigzagged around, sat in traffic for a good hour, and we didn't end up getting down there until like four o'clock. And Jim was like, "Dude." I want to stop at the grocery store and get some fruits and vegetables, man. So we go to the Walmart here in town, so we had to stop there. And, uh, and of course, Bobo and Walmart is like, pretty good too. What are these things called? I said, they are called people, locals. They <laughs> <laughs> look like Northern California people. I said, dude, because they're kind of white. So we had to pick up a cake, you know, the whole night. I had all this stuff. So we eventually did get here and everything was cool and then, and then we had a, a little surprise party for Tom over at, over at one of the cabins last night, so it was a good time. Everyone had a great time, it was a great Gabrielle Cole hosted thank you Gabrielle, I love you. Um, yeah! Woo! And then of course, oh, we can hear more stuff. Of course, my met me. why do people message me the day before the event or two days before? Oh, I, I just want to know if, uh, if I can come to the flea market. <laughs> Read the description. It's free and open to the public. <laughs> <laughs> so, just, just one of those things. So, yes, I do all that, and I do answer all of them real quick, and, you know, I really like that. And, uh, so, so, so everything went good yesterday. I was really happy, and, uh, you know, I got, like, you know, a good two and a half hours of sleep. Which is sweet. And Coyote and I went for a walk this morning and ended up looking up at John from North Carolina went for a walk and hiked around. And then we had the, the who went on the hike today, this morning. Was it a nice hike? Good? Good hike. Why don't you clap at least fake it? Well, that's cool. I appreciate uh, Dave Whitcomb's Ohio expedition. The Buckeye Trail goes throughout the whole state of Ohio. It's the largest single network of trail systems in the entire United States. So if you like to hike, the Buckeye Trail is one to go. It's awesome. And uh, so we had a great time. And then, uh, you know, all that. So, so 
what we're going to do here is at 7.30, we're going to open up registration again. So for those VIPs that you got different passes and all that stuff, you're going to be able to go through that on the next level up, right where Gabrielle was set up earlier. We're also going to have a little table set up for our speakers. <laughs> and, uh, and just to just to sit around, guys, to come talk to them, and you know, especially the kids. I know there's some kids, and I'm hoping Bobo does come back down. I know there's some kids that want to meet them. Um, you know, so let's hope that happens. And uh, and then we are going to have a movie tonight in the main conference room. Uh, it's called a Wish for Giants. Yeah, I didn't know the conference room. Got lost. We've only been here for like 86 oh. years. <laughs> when oh. Cheryl was here. I mean, she like put the first like. Or be <laughs> so in the conference room, it's going to be a wish for giants. Uh, the producer is here, Aaron, Aaron Dunbar. Is he around? No, he's running audio without. Oh, he's running audio without. So, there, Aaron, oh, there he is. you want to say anything about the movie? Real quick, don't be afraid. And he's afraid that I told him about what happened two years ago with the beer bottles. Uh oh. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> I'm <gonna> protect <laughs> I hope all of you will come out and uh, watch the movie later on tonight. Uh, it's uh, a lot of hard work, a lot of volunteers have pulled together. It's a fundraiser for Make-A-Wish. Everywhere we play it, oh, uh, wow. we give the proceeds, whatever the door is, to Make-A-Wish. What time? Yeah, 9.30. 9.30. We're not taking okay. donations tonight. No, we're not taking donations tonight. Uh, we will have a table tomorrow. We're going to sell uh, our t-shirts and uh, DVDs if you like the movie. But uh, yeah, our chapter of Make a Wish is Western PA and uh, West Virginia. So uh, we're technically not allowed to do that here. But uh, you can still enjoy the movie. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I've been with the movie and I enjoy it. The story builds up and it's, it's a good, heartwarming movie. And uh, you know, I hate to say this, folks. You know, when Bobcat comes, Bobcat's a cool dude. And, uh, you know, but Willow Creek is, is a good movie too, but it's a Thrasher movie. And, you know, and it really isn't a slasher movie. It's just, you know, but some of those slasher big movies where you have these big ones with these huge fangs, giant claws, mm -hmm. chasing people down to their death. Come on. You know, you'd have a better chance of getting attacked by a deer in a while than you would a big one. So I just don't like that depiction of horror movie big books because I just know I've seen a big one. I see one in 1997 broad daylight. This was not a creature that showed aggression. This is a creature that was curious and moved away very quickly. Didn't seem to want to have anything to do with it. So don't you know like I said I just don't like the, the horror movie. I'm just not a horror movie person. I'm just not. I mean like you know the only movie I ever liked was when a stranger calls mm -hmm. I haven't checked the children. <laughs> exactly. God, you don't know anything, do you? <laughs> what about, did you see the Spongebob movie? Watch all that. <laughs> but, anyways, uh, I hope uh, all of you have a great time. Our first speaker next tomorrow will be Mr. Ken Gear. Okay, and I think you're talking about the Bigfoot in Alaska, which is something that always has interested me. You know, you got to figure the population of Alaska is probably about this room. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, and then, of course, uh, we'll follow with Ohio VFRO investigator, Peter Chris Mills, over there. Raise your hand. Very, very unique situation in Ohio. Uh, it was a report that I had fielded through the VFRO. Uh, via Caroline Curtis, and we started work at this property, and after interviewing the witnesses, I was like, you know what, I called her, she lived close, I'm like, I need someone that's kind of like a local, because everyone there has guns, everyone there wants to shoot to kill, and, uh, and believe me, the, the, when the substitute postal worker came, she didn't make it six steps up. I mean, boom, no even questions asked. And, uh, but, you know, she had developed a relationship with, this, with these property owners. Uh, we started a real heavy duty recording project, which you guys are going to get not only hear audio, but you're going to hear some amazing audio. Um, 
and the property is still active to this day. I mean, we are still pulling audio files on this property. And, and uh, if you've strung the BFRO website, the report has been published just recently. It's Fairfield County, Ohio. Uh, so if you look at the most recent updates, you will see it on there. Uh, so check out the report, listen to some of the audio that she has on there. And uh, it's just one of those, it's just, to me, it's, in all my years of doing Bigfoot investigations in Ohio, and, I, and I've been involved with some great investigations. I mean, long before you guys ever thought of Bigfoot in Ohio, mm -hmm. I was out in the woods, down in Woodbury, down in Shockton, down in Muskegon County. I was doing stuff long before there were email, long before there was internet. I mean, the only way you could get a report was if you hope a sheriff would give you a call and say, hey, there's some lunatic that says they saw a big Mm -hmm. and, and the biggest problem then is by the time you got the report, you know, it's weeks old, so the evidence factor is just totally not there. And, but these people are seeing something. I mean, so you have to look into this. I just kept looking and looking and looking, and eventually I met Don Keating years ago, and Don showed me some areas in, in Coshocton that were just not only amazing areas, but I mean, we were interviewing witnesses on a weekly basis, I mean, seeing you know, multitude of creatures. So it was an amazing time. And so that was, a, I consider that a great time of Bigfoot. And then when this started happening in 2016, you know, I was like, wow, this is like rival, like Woodbury, you know, the things that were going on there. And mm -hmm. this is just not even rival, it just farly exceeded. There's just been not only just so much things happening, there's just so many sightings by totally unrelated different people. It's just been amazing. So, so you'll get to hear me talk about that to, uh, tomorrow. So give her your full attention. And then, of course, I think we have then Cliff Paraffin speaking. And I'm sure Cliff's going to be awesome. Yeah, we'll see. You don't even know. He's, 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 he's going on YouTube to look at his actions. I'll just do this. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. But, uh, uh -huh. Yeah, 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 whatever. So, so then we're going to have a dinner break, um, which will have about 90 minutes for dinner. So I don't know. What, what is the lodge offering tomorrow, food-wise, like during the dinner break? Stewed? Did you say stewed possum? That's a delicacy as far as <laughs> uh, offering some kind of express lunch or dinner, I'm sure I hope it's like that. Not, yeah, we wrapped up burritos for today. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, so and then we will continue on and we will have Tom Yamaram then speak. And uh, and then we'll lead into Bobo. Which Bobo will finish the, the event with uh, with assistance through Cliff. Cliff is going to be his kind of his MC basically or his co-, co uh, did I say controller and uh, <laughs> whatever? So you're gonna, gonna have Cliff and Bobo together. Yeah. So it will be amazing. And you know the best part of this is you know I get to never get to see a talk. I've never seen a talk at the conference ever, and uh, which I don't mind because they're all overrated anyways. Oh. Right, right Patrick. <laughs> but, but I'd like to introduce you guys to the 2018 MC of the Ohio Bigfoot Conference. This young lady is uh, someone that I met some years ago as a, as a very young teen with a passion for Bigfoot. And now she's a college student uh, studying, I believe, geology. geology. And, uh, and all sorts of whatever ecologies, you know, big foot ecology, middle earth ecology, et cetera, et cetera. But, uh, and this young, was just a young girl, is now becoming a very fine young woman, and she's super smart, super intelligent, and she's definitely gonna be someone that, when I'm probably looking up, she's probably gonna be like, I don't know, <laughs> but it's my honor to introduce the MC, this is Nicole. Yay, Nicole! Woo! Woo-woo! Thank you. 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 Thank
shine the spotlight on them as they deserve. And it's going to be wonderful. Today's been wonderful so far, and tomorrow it's going to be fabulous even more. Because now just started. <laughs> 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 I can't even see that, yes, because we are very blessed to have a wonderful leader of those services. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Start promptly at one. You know me, I'm very on time. I don't like to delay, so let's be very prompt getting to our seats. If anyone has any special needs for seating, like wheelchairs, please let, let our door people know. We will do our best show up a little earlier and to get the best seating. Um, you know, just, just remember, uh, we are pretty darn full as always. I mean, the event's sold out in like four minutes and 50 seconds. And, uh, and it seems to sell out every year in under five minutes. Uh, we'll have another 300 people in the overflow already, you know. So you're talking like 676 people every year. If I had a place double or triple the size, I could fill it. It wouldn't even be a problem. <laughs> so it's like, I wish, I always tell Saul, please, you know, knock the restaurant out for one and make it more meeting room. Then put a restaurant on the back close to the lake. <laughs> and, uh, you know, give us a big ballroom where we can you know, seat a thousand people. And I would bet you, if I could have a thousand people in you that sits right here, because remember, part of the reason why this event does well is not just the great speakers, it's nothing to do with me, believe me. I mean, I am not like that. Like, you know, you're like two peas in the pod, I'm the pea that didn't fit. So, <laughs> I'm the definition of not good for food or whatever. But, uh, um, but if I had that kind of facility, I could fill it. It would, when those tickets sell out, and you saw how many emails we received about not being able to get pick, uh, VIP tickets, how disappointed I am. I do, people, I believe me, I feel awful for you. And there's some people that are here right now and didn't get tickets for last year's event that I told them, you send me an email early, remind me, I will make sure you get tickets. Because I, mean, I like, I, what I love about this weekend is there's so many new faces. And you know, new faces means that, you know, you know, and I love all the people that have been supporting us for years, but I also love to see a new generation or a new pool of people coming through to learn because this is a, a, an amazing subject. And uh, it's just a, a fantastic thing to look into. And, it's, and like I say, it's just fun. You know, I love fun things. So, um, so like I said, I hope you guys have a great time. I, uh, I know nothing can be perfect. That's just how it goes. So, but if I can do anything to help you, yeah, I'll probably growl a little bit. But uh, please understand, it's just my demeanor. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you don't like she does. She annoys me. Cheryl will just a thousand questions at a time. And I said, Cheryl, you asked me that question like nine years straight. I'm going to ask it See? I Well, that's exactly right. And, and you know, and another thing, I, I just want to apologize, you know, for my the way I've been this last year. I, I don't think I've been on top of this event like I've been in the past. You've probably never seen me as many emails and all those little detail things. And, you know, I've just had a lot of things going on in my life and uh, you know, I've kind of lost a little focus and uh, and I had to get my priorities straight too. Very, very so. And uh, so, you know, like I say, I'm already looking forward to May 4th, 2019. Yes. I think you're going to be able to book a room. I already have so I would get the idea. Uh -huh. And uh, so thank you all for coming. And let's see, I gotta make some story out. Like, mm -hmm. Before I love you all. That's what <laughs> <laughs> 658, so let's see this up. So in 30 minutes we're gonna reopen the registration. And like I say, let's have a good time. Let's we're gonna get some guitars out. I'm sure there's gonna be some music jamming. You know, let's have a good old time. And uh, Cinco de Mayo. What do you mean, a beer? A shot? Tequila. Great. Well, you know, I, I can't handle that stuff. You can. <laughs> but, you know, like I said, I mean, let's let's have a nice time tonight. Let's, let's go support the movie at 9 30. Um, it's going to be a great little flick. It's only about, I would say, about 80 minutes long. 
yeah, so it's not a long movie at all. So it, and it goes, once that story goes, it goes quick, it's cool, the big foot in it is cool. It's like just a great, you know, story and happiness. You know, like I say, I, mean, I like happiness. So. Um, but anyways, if, uh, one last thing, I would like to thank all my sponsors. I'd like to thank all the great groups. As you see all the banners out there of all these different groups from all over the country that sponsor this event. Uh, I can't thank you enough. Even the individuals, uh, give them all a round of applause. Yeah! Uh, and we continue to the event. That's how this is going to happen. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, especially Expedition Bigfoot, the museum in Georgia, Dave Picaro, who couldn't make it this weekend, and John Wick and Team Squatch uh, They've been my big main sponsors. Yeah. And, uh, and like I say, I mean, you see these people look out of the spot to Just stuff that from Massachusetts doesn't mean they're going to work for Aunt Todd. They're good dudes. I've gone to Massachusetts and I've done spots and stuff with them. Believe me, there's Bigfoot in Massachusetts. And you would never know it until you've been there. And when you go there, you're like, wow, you can't believe it. So, anyways. Thank you all. Thank you, the group from Georgia, the CSI Raiders. Yeah! Minnesota Bigfoot Research Team, Hockey with Bigfoot Conference, Ohio Bigfoot Organization, Bigfoot Game. Who else? Me, Patrick, all Patrick's DJ service. <laughs> and, uh, there's so many of you guys that I just can't uh, thank for. The BFRO for the, for just a great network of people through there. Uh, Brassman Gear, Ellen and Jesse for doing my audio video, Paul Costco for giving me the awesome audio. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I posted to Paul. I told Paul that if he was not awesome, any of my posts on OBC from this day till the next conference, I would give him a free VIP ticket. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, folks, let's take our time getting out of here. Thank you so much. If you have any questions or if you just want to like land base me, you can do it over here. Uh, I appreciate everything and have a great time. Thank you. Good morning. And this is I'm I'm out on the back deck of our room. Look at the lake. Isn't that beautiful? We got some, some folks out on the, out on the lake already. This morning it's only nine o'clock. There's people out in boats, out on the lake. Got my coffee. I am happy, folks. This is the day of the conference today. My coffee is actually steaming. I can see my coffee steaming. <laughs> this is great. But uh, yeah, this is all for Lake. This is this is right out our back door. This is, ah, oh, beautiful views. There's the other side of the lake. You know, tell them how many Sasquatches have been running around out in this area. And I'm sitting here enjoying my coffee and just enjoying this beautiful day. A little chillier than I expected this morning. Don't we have the radio? Hey, Ed, what's going on? You gonna be here today? Hey, Toby. <laughs> uh, good morning to all of you who are watching. Well, we've been having a lot of fun here. You know, it's the last couple of days, Kevin and I have. And, um, beautiful. This almost reminds me a little bit of Harrison Lake. I'm in British Columbia. Like, where the, the lake has, like, mount, islands with mountains in the middle of it. And there's just, I mean, just, you can see, far as the eye can see, you can see the hills. The rolling hills of southeast Ohio. This is actually the first year I've done this where I've done, where I've done Facebook Lives from the Ohio Bigfoot Conference. But I figured, hey, I got a good phone, I got good data on it, why not?
I don't know if y'all can see it, but there's like a beach over there on the other side of the lake. You guys might not be able to see it, but it's way over there. I hear the geese. It's a beautiful morning. We got a little rain. Uh, it rained some yesterday, but well, they wasn't of much consequence. We were all indoors anyway, so. When we had the VIP dinner last night, it was nice. And we watched the movie Wish for Giants. It was okay. It was pretty good. <coughs> Hung out at the bar for a while. Thought several people. That was fun. Now, you guys know I don't drink alcohol. I mean, it was mainly Coke that I drank. So, I didn't drink anything else. I'm a teetotaler. I'm proud of it. They like to go to the bar and just hang out and socialize, talk to people. You know, that's one of the most fun aspects of the Ohio Bigfoot Conference. You get to hang out with people. And the nice thing is, you come in early. You come in a day early before all the craziness starts, which is going to start today, by the way. Um, you get to talk to people. You get to know them and all that. I, I've gotten to... Um, oh, I'm sorry you can't make it, Ed. Oh, man. But you get to talk to people. I've been talking to uh, Ruth Young Thinkpan. Sweet lady. Sweet lady. She's from Texas. Some of you may know her. Some of you may know Ms. Ruth. She's a sweet, sweet lady. Very dear, very dear person. I love her to death. She and I, we spent, we spent a little bit of time together. I've actually, I've had dinner with her. I've had breakfast with her, you know. No, I'm not, I'm not looking into moving, moving on her husband. No, it's just it's being friendly. We're just being friends, you know, talking and stuff like that. You know, it's, it's enjoyable. You know, I've gotten to hang out with people here. All right, there goes a boat right there. There goes somebody in the boat. <clears throat> I mean, we got to do this at the 50th where we got to hang out with people and talk and do all kinds of cool stuff. I mean, it was great. You know, this is... I love, and I love Ohio. Oh, the fresh air here. It's not like in the city, folks. This is beautiful. This is just gorgeous out here. So now you're enjoying my coffee and <coughs> just taking it all in before the craziness starts. So... You know, they got the vendors setting up downstairs the uh, the largest Sasquatch flea market in the world. <laughs> that's what they're gonna. That's what it's called. So, oh boy, I just realized this deck is not that far off the ground. If a Sasquatch wanted to, it could hurtle right over that rail. <laughs> oh, maybe that's why Kevin leaves the door locked at night. <laughs> oh but yeah this is a beautiful location it's such an ideal location to have this event you know and, and this year this event marks 10 years of me attending bigfoot conferences this is my eighth here and i've gone to others as well so but you can't beat that view you cannot beat that view that is beautiful Anyway, guys, I'm going to sit here. I'm going to finish my coffee and have some breakfast. And, uh, hey, I'll check in with you guys later. Y'all be good or be good at it. <laughs> Beat it up, Alan.
Bob Dylan and the Civil Rights Movement. Uh -huh. Woo! Yeah. Here in the heartland, meet the rivers and the streams, where the forests spread around, the farmland seas. Oh, high water flowing, the Appalachians to the sea. Here in the buck, I say, big foots are what they see. I hear the wood knock saying, don't come here. I see the footprints showing in the mud so clear From the Shocking County and everywhere I go I know there's Bigfoot in Ohio Slow and lazy, sightings and strange screams are driving locals crazy. They see them crossing roads into the Narby woods. Sightings in the dark in the nervous neighborhood. I hear that wood not saying, Don't come near. I see this footprint showing. In the mud so clear From Guernsey County Yes! And everywhere I go I know there's Bigfoot in Ohio Woo! Yeah. Oh yeah Ooh. Out the numbers In the Hawking Hills they roam East of Canton, Beaver Creek, State Park's their home. Wherever forests grow and waters running free, there in those deep ravines, that's where they'll be. I hear that wood knock saying, Don't come near. Well, I see those footprints showing in the mud so clear. From Ashland County and everywhere I go, I know there's Bigfoot in Ohio. And I'm not saying I know you're here. I see those footprints walking in the mud so clear. From Saltport State Park, yes, everywhere I go. I know there's Bigfoot in Ohio. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Glad that song works here. Yes. <laughs> Right, but we'll keep it going with uh, the song I wrote about our great researching friend John Green. Yes, yes. Bound is John Green. So just keep looking at the Ohio slide. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the hot springs was how we debate. It says what you see was back on the scene that caught the attention of John Green. Well, the more he heard, well, the more it rang true. The story investigated, his interest grew. The evidence was compelling upon Ruby Creek. He knew something was out there, he was determined to see. Now he came to California when he saw Jerry Crew holding that foot cast and then he just knew that finally this creature was become his mission. Got Tom Slick to slim Bigfoot expedition. Well, he was out thinking Sasquatch wasn't seeking no glory. He was the one documenting the story and who was always one of the first on the scene if the Sasquatch had been there. So had John Green. <laughs> John Green. Now 
you publish some books in spurs for you learn irritation for thoroughness and logic you earn he wants science to address this mystery the mushroom is dismay this was never to be to this day he's still looking Directly reports and sorting the facts. His database of signs and his evidence increased. He can never catch a glimpse of this beast. He was there when they screened the film from Bluff Creek. He was there when they screened that film <laughs> from Bluff Creek. The younger this summer found tracks on Onion Peak. <laughs> it seemed the answer to this riddle was so close yet so fleeting. Like the creature itself, but John was never retreating. He was the one documenting the story and who was always one of the first on the scene that the Sasquatch had been there. So had John Green. So had John Green. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <Woo! laughs> yeah. We published some books in his first when he learned reputation for thoroughness and logic he earned. He wanted science to address this mystery, but much to his dismay, this was never to be. <laughs> Did this day still on? John's on his own. <laughs> now he has no regrets he'd like only to be To be there when they finally solve this mystery so He was out seeking Sasquatch one seeking the glory Investigating and documenting the story And who was always one of the first on the scene If a Sasquatch had been there So had John Green So had John Green <laughs> So a John Green. Yeah. I just really want to thank all of you for supporting me and helping me after my stroke and the Yams Rocks initiative. Yes. Right. I thank John for being here. He's working so hard. Give us a round of applause. Thank you. So Whoop, whoop. Somebody said, you're never going to walk again. And I said, oh, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> never say never. <laughs> that was a really long road, but my wife was always there by my side. So this here from Mary Lee. Yeah. Yes! Yes! Woo! Whoop, whoop. Mark, Mark the word, Mighty Mark. Yes! Woo! Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Ohio Paper Conference, for having me back. You know, I always have a place in my heart for salt pork. No, truly. Anyway, sorry, I can't come up with a quick one. <laughs> well, you're worth having that. Yes. Yes. <laughs> My eyes sort of still work. <laughs> so, so, can you, Henry or Kevin pull out the uh, guitar case that's under there? Let's slide it out. And then let's see, you're going to have to unzip the pocket. This one. Yeah, unzip that. <laughs> All right, see if this still works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some things you don't do that often, but. Oh, we know what song this is. We know what this is. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, well, definitely wanted to do my tribute to the Patterson Gimlet film. Yes. Yeah. 51 years, 50 years ago. Yeah. Roger and Bob rode out that day 
until that log jam got in their way. And they got lucky on Bluff Creek that day. Yeah, they got lucky when she walked away. Yeah, Roger and Bob rode out that day. Roger and Bob, they were gone three weeks. Right in the forest around Bluff Creek. They shot some film of a big foot bear. She walked on two legs and was covered in hair, yeah. Roger and Bob had quite a week. Al got a call on the telephone Roger and Bob, they stopped by his home At this hour? They told him about their good luck And Roger said, I filmed that son of a buck Al got a call on the telephone Love you, Al! Yes! John and Renee, they came down to see Just what those cowboys filmed at Bluff Creek They made maps of the site complete Made Jim McLaren walk in Patty's feet, yeah John and Renee came down to see And Bob Tidmus he came out to cast those tracks left by Patty first and last. Well, they showed movement of a flexible foot. No, they weren't perfect, but they were worth a look. Yes, Bob Tidmus came out to cast. Woo! Yeah. Woo! That film to Russia and the UK. He showed it there to see what they had to say. Those Londoners put down their nose. The Russian scientists they looked very close. Yes, Renee took that film to Russia and the UK. That film got shown on the TV Got written up in magazines like Argosy It made an impression on our cautious minds It made an impression of the lasting kind The film got shown on the TV Roger and Bob, they rode out that day And their lives changed in every way So did ours, because we got to see A living Bigfoot walking, tall and free, yeah Roger and Bob went down in history Woo! Woo!
put that film of those guys. Yes. I'll never hear that one again. Uh -huh. well, at least for one year. Uh -huh. Uh, Jerry Crew? Jerry Crew, yeah. The, the boss and talk to the Ricola. I am sanitized. No, I'll drink this. Thank you. Did I spill it? Yeah, no, I spill it. Yeah. No, anyway, thank you so much. The recovery's been great. It's really going well. And they don't tell you anything, of course, in the hospital, except you'll get better. But I can't move my left arm or leg. You'll, you'll get better. All right, when's that going to happen? Now, how about a year? A year? Yeah. <laughs> oh, a year it was. Yeah. Can you hear the guitar at all? Yeah. Yeah. All right, great. Must be a Song co written by James Bobo Bay. Yes! Yeah. 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 my paper last Monday evening. Saw the picture on the front page, I just couldn't believe. Serious man holding a giant for cast. News this image was bound to spread fast. Who's this man that brought that image to us? His friends and his family say he's a guy they can trust. Saw some things on Blood Creek that he couldn't explain. Now he's all over the front page. What was his name? Jerry Crew. Oh, he knew what to do. Jerry Crew. Those who believe them were but a few. I didn't stop Jerry. Cause he knew what to do. Yeah, he knew what to do. When he would show up for work and find these tracks near his cat. People sometimes prank him, but this wasn't that. Now these were much deeper and they roamed far and wide. He couldn't match the depth of the 60 inch stride. He told his friend Bob about the secret transfer, showed him how to mix plaster to capture the aim of dance. Bring out the cast, and then we could see what kind of creature you got there and solve this mystery. Jerry Crew, oh, he knew what to do. Jerry Crew, those who believed him were but a few. It didn't stop Jerry, cause he knew what to do. Yeah, he knew what to do. That's how he happened to be in Eureka that day. Show his cast to his friends. When one day they'd say, Let's go show Jim Zoli. Put it next to his boot and says, It's the new Sasquatch. Call him Bigfoot. This wasn't the first that they heard of this lore. There were new stories about it that had been written before. Jerry's picture went we wide and his story was told. There was a big hairy man ate the woods of Humboldt. Jerry Crew, oh, he knew what to do. Jerry Crew, those who believed him were but a few. Didn't stop Jerry, cause he knew what to do. Yeah, he knew what to do. Ray Wallace said he did it, but he's a no liar. If he could make a buck, he set his equipment on fire. Not all of them tracks could be made by his plan. But there's animals out there, it's just a lewd man. We know of that film that came off that track that Jerry Crew was constructing. And the creature's all black. Yeah, Gimlin and Patterson gave the world a good view. But it's nice to thank Jerry, cause he knew what to do. Jerry Crew, oh, he knew what to do. Jerry Crew. Those who believed in were but a few. I didn't stop Jerry, cause he knew what to do. Yeah, he knew what to do. Jerry Crew, he knew what to do. Standing room only crowd. Yes. Let's hear you. Woo! <laughs>
<laughs> All right, wake up. <laughs> <laughs> Uh -huh. Ohio, Ohio, Red Prize. Ohio did that again. Sure. Hey, yeah. It's easy to sing. I'll play it. <laughs> Encore for this one, yeah. Oh, yeah. Here in the heartland, meet the rivers and the streams. Where the forests spread around, the farmland seems Oh, high river flowing from the Appalachians to the sea. Here in the Buckeye State, Bigfoots are what they see. I hear the wood not saying, don't come near. I see the footprints showing in the mud so clear from Coshocton County and everywhere I go I know there's Bigfoot in Ohio mm -hmm. Oh yeah Oh uh, Mohican River, yeah. <laughs> Mohican River flows slow and lazy. Sightings and strange screams driving locals crazy. I see them crossing roads into the Nobby Woods. Sightings in the dark, nervous neighborhood. I hear that wood knock saying, don't come near. I see the footprints showing in the mud so clear. From Guernsey County and everywhere I go, I know there's Bigfoot in Ohio. South of Columbus, in the Hocking Hills they roam. East of Canton, Beaver Creek, State Park's their home. Wherever forests grow and waters running free, they're in those deep ravines. Well, that's where they'll be. I hear the wood not saying, "Don't come near." I see the footprints showing in the mud so clear from Ashland County and everywhere I go I know there's Bigfoot in Ohio and I would not say it I know you're here I see the footprints walking in the mud so clear from Salt Fork State Park, everywhere I go, I know there's Bigfoot in Ohio. Oh, I don't like that. Probably the next time have table cloths that don't get are windproof, please. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Well, you're the one who made the beans. Oh, oh. Oh, but you said I'm the one who made the wind. <laughs> well, I love beans, so anyone who knows me loves refried beans. That was that's why that was one stipulation on Friday night's dinner was refried beans. I hate rice. I hate things like that. I hate carbs. I hate bread. I mean, when I see bread trucks, I like drive them off the road. I mean, just to save from trying to save you guys from it. Mm -hmm. It's just so evil. I mean, when Sauron created evil, he created bread. When Darth Vader made the Death Star, they made it out of bread. I mean, <laughs> they figured, well, if it explodes anyways, at least all the bread will fly everywhere and land on other plants, and people will eat it, and we'll win again. <laughs> so, uh, definitely evil. But thank you, Robin. Thank you, JC. Thank you, the Slatsers, for providing the food. Yes! If you guys... 
you guys haven't donated any money to them, or, you know, to help offset their costs, uh, you still have an opportunity to. Uh, you guys are just such a somber crowd today. I mean, <laughs> what is so sad today? <laughs> you can eat more. You can take plates to go. Take plates. Go back to the lodge. Go out front. Sell it. People walk in. <laughs> I mean, you can do that. But uh, anyways, uh, I hope you guys uh, had a good time at the conference this year. Um, it was a very, very fun event, and I thought uh, all the speakers did a great job. And uh, yes. Um, I like obviously I'd like to thank them all for for doing their presentations and you know sorry that uh, Bobo couldn't make it today I guess uh, his girlfriend's sick or something and so he oh, went, he went to ride into town to get a good phone line to to cause he didn't have good cell phone service here so um, I hope you guys all had a good time but is that who here is uh, who's from the Salt Fork area here anyone like anyone live in this area. No. Well, that's good. And, uh, well, this area here is called the Handicap Picnic Area, and this is an area that for many, many years, uh, Bigfoot researchers were coming here doing a lot of research here right down on the end of this point here. And there's a lot of people that have had purported and alleged sightings of Sasquatch right in this park, and this is one of the, one of the areas. And if you went down, if you go out to the end here, turn right, and then make the next right, where it, I think they call it the going down toward the... Uh, the stone house parking lot but if you continue to the left and take it back there there's more print the bigfoot ridge is there well bigfoot ridge was named that because of the the the, the couple there was a husband and wife who uh they, they had a little big routine like i think it was every saturday or sunday they would pick up burgers at this one famous place in the, in town and they would go over there and they would eat them and they'd even bring them for their dogs too and they always went to the end of that road to the last picnic area where there was a picnic bench and they would sit there and eat their burgers right by the woods and well lo and behold their dogs were going bananas looking down into the corner of the uh, of the wood line which is only about 300 feet away from where their picnic table was and they just kept barking and barking looking in the corner looking in the corner well they just kept eating they even threw the food to the dogs the dogs weren't touching it just kept barking and barking and then finally the the husband he just kind of looked up and he noticed in the left corner there that something was standing there kind of watching them. And he took a double look, told his wife, honey, who's that? She turned around and looked and they're like, wait a minute, that's not a person. What the hell is that? Mm -hmm. And uh, so sure as heck, they stand up and their dogs are going ballistic by this time. And uh, they were really scared. So they decided to take the dogs back to the vehicles and get them inside. And then they were gonna go back down and take a closer look. So they did that. And the whole time they retreated from the picnic table and it was roughly about where the picnic table is back there to here to the parking lot and so they and it was literally a pretty similar looking piece of property like this too and uh they came back to the vehicle they they got the dogs put in they decided to walk back so they went back to the spot they were at and then they decided to have the courage to walk toward the corner and so when they walked toward the corner, they got there, they didn't see anything. So they thought it was quite puzzling. So what they did is they skirted the back edge, just like this property. And to the far right side, there was a straight trail that went down. And they decided to walk down that trail because it dropped down into a hollow down over there. And they thought, well, hell, if we just keep walking like this and looking, maybe we will see something down in the hollow. And as they kept walking, lo and behold, from a couple big trees that were down there comes this large Sasquatch walks up. It was looking up at them the whole time and it started making some kind of, uh, you know, grunt noises at them and they got very scared and they turned and they ran their butts back up to the car. And uh, matter of fact, guess who was the, f the first investigator on the scene? What do you think? It was you. It was me. <laughs> and I remember it was myself and a couple other BFRO investigators and got to interview them and uh, he was, as a matter of fact, he worked for the newspaper and he's been a long time reporter and he said, I've heard stories about this, but I never believed any of this, but they saw it multiple times and it kept grunting. Even when they were retreating, it was grunting at them. And when they said, when they got back up to the car, they turned and looked and it was back right up on the top of the hollow watching them again. So it actually, instead of retreating, it did the opposite thing as they retreated, it came back up the hollow edge use that that thicknesses at security and, and watched them and uh so 
some very interesting stories from the park. Um, so does this, does Salt Fork have Bigfoot? Sometimes it does. Does, does Salt Fork have Bigfoot all the time? Absolutely not. Uh, I, mean, I know there's a lot of people that uh, research around here, but the un unfortunate thing about doing that is what? You kind of dilute the quality of data. And when, you're dilute and when you have everyone doing wood knocks, everyone doing whoops, and then on the next ridge line is the next campsite, what are they doing? Replies, wood knocks, whoops. And so I am sure there's a lot of that going on. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that's why I tell you, if you're going to come down here, you want to come down midweek when there's no campers down here. And, you know, you want to come down when there's a very, very, you know, small population of people in this park. Because this is one of Ohio's busiest state parks. Um, but in, in essence, there's roughly 35,000 acres between the state park and then the wildlife area. So that's a lot of land with a huge body of water. And of course, if anyone knows Ohio and this topography, as you go east toward Pennsylvania, you go into Egypt Valley, you go into all these different reservoirs, Piedmont Lake, Atwood Lake, Clendenning, Tappan Lake, Seneca Lake, uh, I know Leesville Lake, I know I'm missing a few, but there are a ton of water in eastern Ohio. And when you have all that water, the, the foothills, can you settle down, Cheryl? <laughs> I mean, if not, we're going to have some more hot dogs. I'm <laughs> Well, it's, it's okay. I like <laughs> uh, Remember the beans? <laughs> anyways, uh, so do you guys remember last year who was there? We had Robert W. Morgan as a speaker. Well, Robert, he was researching Salt Fork back in the 80s, and uh, he actually, part of his team, had a sighting right by Hozak's Cave. And it was funny because the sighting took place. Robert had just left, driven down out out of the parking lot at Hosex Cave, went on Road 1 and started headed toward Freedom Road. And uh, that's when his couple of his teammates saw the Sasquatch cross the road and it was like literally Bob had just left. So, so it's a really, really uh, unique situation, a very cool story. And uh, But yeah, I mean, there's been a lot of sightings in Salt Fork. One that stands out to me is the... I had a guy, I, was, I used to be in the aquarium fish hobby for a long time. I, I mean, I was heavily involved with an organization up in Cleveland. And uh, and one, they knew I was interested in Bigfoot. And this one guy, this Ron Bush guy came up to me and he says, Hey, my brother Eddie says that, that you're the guy into Bigfoot. I said, yeah. He goes, have you ever been to Salt Fork? I said, don't worry about the bees, please. <laughs> don't. I mean... <laughs> Or we're going to get Wilson and tie him down and they'll all attack him because so. <laughs> um, he's terrified of bees. But, uh, um, but anyways, uh, in the in the late 70s, Ron, they always deer hunted over here, over in the wildlife area. And uh, he was saying that they typically dr did, they hunted and they did like a drive where they had a whole bunch of people in a series. They would drive an area and they'd have people on the other end, hopefully driving the deer out to take the shot. And uh, well, he was on the end of the drive or the, or the lower point, he said, down in the ravine. And as he was you know, coming through you know, with his weapon in hand, he comes around the bend in the drive and he says, to, like, he comes around the bend and it's like there's a huge tree and a couple other big trees in the woods. And he says, there's this huge brown hairy back there. And he says, when I come around the bend, the thing got startled, it turned. And when I saw it, he goes, I yelled so loud because it scared me so bad because he thought it was a, just another tree until it moved. And then when it turned, he screamed, it screamed, <laughs> and they both turned and ran the other way. Well, <laughs> well, Ron, you know, obviously was totally, totally terrified over what he had just seen. And he had said... And I can't rem remember what kind of gun he was using for deer hunting, but he said he didn't even think he'd be able to knock it down. That's how big and massive. He said it was a chestnut brown in color. It was very broad shouldered, very well built. And uh, he figured it was every bit of eight feet tall. And he said it when it screamed, it sounded like a woman. I mean, that's <laughs> that's what he said. And he said... He said he got back to his group and he said they all noticed he was visibly in shock because he was turning white, he was very pale, and he told them what happened. And of course, they all, you know, yeah, whatever, giggle, giggle, laugh, laugh. But guess what? They didn't see a, they didn't see any deer that whole three days they were there. I mean, 
So obviously there must have been a squatch around keeping him away or keeping an eye on him or something like that. But uh, but he uh, never has hunted again since that day. He stopped hunting after that because he said, <laughs> he, I got, he was, I'm not going back in those woods. No way. And uh, I, so we figured out on the map where he was, and, and, it was, and it was really ironic. We're looking on the map, an old historical map of the area, and the area they were hunting was called Devil's Knob. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So it's like, wow, and it's really called Devil's Knob. So, well, the Tuscaroras Valley here, or the, where the Tuscaroras River's up north of here, the Delaware Indians, this was their territory. Well, the Delaware Indians, uh, if you look in their history and their books, the local books they have here, they talk about you know, living on the Delaware River in settlements. They're talking about bison, talking about panthers, grizzly bears, elk, everything like that. But they also mention that, that there were... There were other things that they had to uh, leave food out for them away from their camp so they wouldn't come into the camp and take their women and children. And then I thought to myself, well, that would be convenient, taking women and children. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) Notice. (laughs) Yeah, whatever. Mm -hmm. But, uh, or or better yet, women, children, and Oliver. (laughs) (laughs) But since Oliver's becoming a good walker, Oliver will... Get the benefit of the tout. Taters, uh, they're looking for you. There's Taters. Oh, that's Yes, but uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, hey, Taters, how are you? Good. But so, so there is a long history at Salt Fork, but to be honest with you, if I was going to be sending you to look for Bigfoot around here, it's, you know, you can go five, ten miles outside the park in different wildlife areas and probably have better results because those areas are less frequented by people. Um, there's just as much water. You got to remember, Salt Fork drains down, heading toward Coshocton County. This is Guernsey County here. So all that drainage, like when this lake has flooded because of extremely wet springs, they actually have to open up the dam. And that sometimes 77 north and south. I've been down there where 77 was full of water, was closed. You had to get off one exit, drive through the country, all these roads just to get around it because of the low point where the dam is. So all that water, though, goes down into the Wills Creek watershed. And Wills Creek is where I had my study in 1997. And Wills Creek is just like, just put it this way. If, if there was a place where t- ticks like to disco dance, it's Wills Creek. <laughs> There's so many of them. They carry, they'll carry this dog away, like 100 of them just carry it away. And, it and, gone. and it's, some of, it's some of the thickest multi-floral rose bush every invasive species because it was all old strip mine territory that you're going to find in the entire state and uh it's strip mines everywhere it's hollows it's it's there's water everywhere ponds everywhere and it's really you can't camp there you can't use a fire if if you, you can camp by the pond by the rivers to fish but you're still not allowed to do a fire um, it's American Electric Power owns a lot of the land, so it's all they have. They have game trails through there, all over the place, and that's an area where, in one night in winter of, I believe it was 2015 or I think it was 15 or 16, a, a team of us were over over in this area. Had there were 21 wood knocks in six minutes, and we didn't do anything. Just they were just going and going and going. We just kept counting and counting. I think Taters was there, wasn't he? Yeah, I mean, then we, then I did a whoop, and we, typical, you know, you do it on the top or bottom of the hour, and I did a whoop, and it seemed like maybe only a couple minutes went by, and there was this huge reply, and I thought to myself, well, they must have just done a reply, you know, not just kept a protocol. Well, then when we finally got together, hey, that was a good whoop you guys did. We didn't do that whoop. We thought that was you doing a second one. Nope, that was a reply to mine, and, uh, and I was with Alan McGargo, who was, the AV guys and Fathom Frontiers and Grassman gear and Alan and I, he had his flare and we were flaring the hillside and there was like a huge image up on the hillside and it and it, you know, the only problem is being pitch black, you couldn't really tell the distance because of how big the hill was and it wasn't until you went back in the daytime did you realize where it was. It was behind, there was a huge tree, couple trees up in there where it was and where it, where it was, it was there was a recess behind there where it could actually it looked like it was hunkering down like this. And then you know, and then we we decided. I said, well, let's just keep walking, and we'll come back and try and see if it and we'll flare it again. And when we came back, it was gone. It wasn't even there. And so we've had some really interesting encounters around here. Um, 
when I had when I had my uh, encounter, it was on April twentieth, nineteen ninety-seven. Um, I had talked to some people the previous fall of ninety-six, and one thing people like to do, especially as squatchers down here, last day of gun season. You don't go squatching that day because you're probably going to be one of the tags that get turned in. But to, what, what I like to do is go check the bait stations, like the check stations, because everyone's trying to fill their tag and everyone's shooting everything. So that's why you don't go in the woods. But you, I mean, it's amazing some of the deer that get brought in that last day. So I would go up to that 541 beverage over there and sit there and, and watch people coming in just crazily trying to tag their stuff. And uh, well, I always would take my back in the day you know it wasn't kind of cool to take your big bigfoot postcards and put them up places or your, your business cards you know people shoot you or, what are you crazy so you try to like do it hopefully no one saw you and run like hell and uh, well lo and behold i do it didn't think anyone saw me and then i'm standing by the one cooler getting some a drink out and the guy goes uh hey i saw you put this card over here and he goes and i said oh i'm sorry i thought it was the store owner i was apologizing and uh, he goes, oh no, it's, it's cool. He goes, but he goes, I've never seen a Bigfoot, but I've heard stories around here. He goes, hey, he goes, my buddy and I were fishing over near uh, uh, Will's Creek, and we saw something unusual. Are you guys into anything else? And I said, yeah, I, you know, any cougars, you know, anything strange, animals that are not supposed to be around. Well, he says, well, we saw two badgers. I said, huh. really in Ohio? And he goes, yeah, we came up on this one lake back there, and. There was, we were going back there to fish and where the strip mine met an old coal pile back there where two badgers came out of the den. Mm -hmm. And he told me right where it was and I wrote all the details and I put it in the center council of my Jeep with the idea that one day I would go there. Well, then the following spring of April of, of, of 97, that's when I decided we were, I was down over in, in the Woodbury Wildlife Area on a Sunday and it was like the first nice day of spring where like when you hiked in the woods, you weren't sinking a foot in. That's how, how much rain there was that year. Yeah. And I, I mean, like you look at the foliage right now, by April 27th of that year, the foliage was just this thick. I mean, and it's, we're, you know, it's two, like two weeks almost before and, uh, or a week before. And uh, so I end up, uh, Going to my buddies, I'm like, oh, let's let's head over to that Will's Creek area, and I'll go. I want to check out where these badger dens are. And my one buddy said, hey, there's supposed to be a bald eagle's nest over there. I want to go check that out. And uh, so, so lo and behold, I uh, we hike back. It's probably about a mile and a half back, mile and a half, maybe two mile back at most to get to this coal pile. And it's basically a strip mine. If you guys know what strip mines are, they kind of look like staircases. And this strip mine was probably reclaimed in the late 40s, early 50s. So it was all trees and multi-floral rose bush. And yet it wasn't too thick on April 20th that we managed to just follow one of the tiers all the way back where the guy said the coal pile was. And sure as heck, there's these dens. Checked them out. There was evidence of some kind of omnivore living in there at one time, but there wasn't any badgers in there. And uh, so my buddy goes, oh, hey, I'm going to take off. I want to go take the photos of the bald eagle's nest on the other side of the lake. So he, and I said, okay, cool. And he goes, I'll radio, radio you when I get to the road. And it seemed like maybe 30 minutes goes by and he shoots me a call and says, I'm at the road, I'm going. I said, okay, and uh, no problem. And then me and the other guy just started hiking out of the woods. And uh, so instead of coming the same way we came in, well, the thing with the strip mine, although there's all these tiers, when it eventually starts getting close to the road, where do all the tiers do? They all start going down to the road because the coal, trucks that were hauling the coal would come down like an embankment. So it got to the point where the tiers actually stopped and turned, and that's where it would all go down, and it was maybe about 600 yards till you finally hit the dirt road where my Jeep was parked. And so as I was, as I was hiking down the trail with this other guy, I mean, within like a minute or so of us leaving, we started hearing all this heavy movement up on the tier above us. So we would stop and just look, oh cool, we spooked up a whole bunch of deer. Common sense, right? And uh, so we just kept going. And uh, another minute or so, more heavy movement. And I just looked at him and I said, dude, it's, come on, just deer, because there's tons of them there. So we just kept going. And then sure as heck, we're going, you start hearing movement again. And it's just finally to the point where it's like cat and mouse for a little bit. And uh, so I finally said to him, I said, dude, 
obviously we we spooked up a deer herd of some sort i said go ahead and just take the lead i'm going to wait maybe five ten minutes and then i'll follow you out and we'll split up and hopefully whatever it is will they'll all come running around through the you know you know someone's going to see something so he ended up leading walking out and i waited about five ten minutes and i just was sitting there just real quietly it was a real sunny spring day maybe 55 degrees no wind at all and i started walking and as i was walking as immediately as as soon as i started walking like the first 10 steps or so you start hearing movement again up above so i'm just like looking up there like what the heck so i would go it would go i would stop it would stop and it just played that the whole time and i'm sitting there getting worried because i don't have a gun i don't have anything but i did have like a thing of bear mace that I had and so I thought oh well pull the mace out and if something you know tries to do something to me I'll have some form of protection so as I as we played this game you know going on and on I just got to the point where I'm thinking oh geez if I decide you know to run and it's a cat what's it going to do mm. yeah and I was really thinking there was a cougars there was all these stories of this panther around there so I'm thinking, don't tell me I'm going to be panther bait, you know, or panther food or anything like that. So I finally got to the point of the of the hot, of the strip mine where it all started to make its way down to that last 600 yards to the dirt road. And I remember getting up there thinking, well, if I get up here, if I just decide to sprint, you know, I could just run like hell. But then I thought that's probably not smart if it's this panther. So I started going down the, the hill and I just got a little ways down and there was some thick green pines to the left. So I just sat down on my rear end and that was it. And I listened and, uh, you know, lo and behold, you know, uh, I started hearing some movement again. After a while, I was sitting there like, wow, I mean, uh, this is uh, very unusual. I was sitting there three, four minutes and you know, it just wasn't like it was before and I listen and listen and then I'm thinking, okay, this is weird And I was thinking about standing up and then when I did Think about it. I heard plain as day crunch crunch cr I mean like plain as day footballs above me and I'm in this like this position And so it'd be up there and it, I, I swear it like went right past me and I'm like, oh beep and beep beep <laughs> um, uh, because and, and I was thinking like because I've had encounters with this type of folk before and what kind of folk does Appalachia have a lot of in those hills and those hollers mm -hmm. well banjo players but what do, they like to, <laughs> what do those banjo players like to grow Weed. marijuana and there's a lot of areas where I've been escorted out of the woods with double barrel shotguns or 45s. Mm -hmm. stay, you know, with, and they had barbed wire over everything. And mm -hmm. so I was like, oh, don't tell me it's one of these guys because I've had encounters close to there, like maybe five miles away. And so I was kind of scared, but I started standing up to look over the pines and look up. And when I did, there was nothing there. And I'm like, <laughs> what the hell i mean i heard it plain as day mm -hmm. so i kind of looked back down toward my vehicle i looked back down to the trail i was coming on and as i panned back up the hill like over here i started looking over here and when i got to about this position i'm looking i'm like what the heck and about 75 feet away at most there was this thing kind of squatted down and it was jet black in color and i thought to myself uh black bear cool so i mean because it was very shiny black i mean it was low to the ground at least it looked like so i go and i pull my i have this big pack on and i pull this big pack off of me and it made a lot of noise and when i got to flick it around this thing goes like from slow motion it seemed like like to this low compact position to start rising and of course when i saw the movement i thought oh cool i'm gonna see this and this as and when this thing starts turning the first thing I see is this on the side of its head because the sunlight was hitting it and I could see right where the ear was and I saw this very flat profile face sunk into these real deep shoulders and it turned its whole torso toward me and when it did it just went like and I just went like this big time because Hmm. But behind me was another tier of the strip mine, and I almost went right off. Hmm. And I just sort of rolled down 15, 20 feet. But, uh, um, but I gained my composure, and I'm like, I have cameras in my bag. 
Mm -hmm. And I flip my bag in front of me and go to make the move as I'm keeping eye contact. And as soon as I made this movement, it immediately turned and walked right up the tier above it. And I mean, just in excitement, I had a brand new camcorder on there in the bag. I pull it out. I never used it before, by the way. Figured out, like, running and dragging my bag up to where it was initially standing. And I finally went up after it. And I get up on top of the tier of the direction it was going. And how I know which direction it was going, because you could see all the tops of the trees just moving violently in the direction. Well, I'm sitting there videotaping, just thinking I am. It's recording. And I look at my arms going like this. It was like shaking. Un I mean, literally, you could just couldn't even hold it that's how i mean i felt like 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 you know spongebob you know wobbles and everything like that i was definitely like going through something and i literally just stopped recording and put my arm down i just tried to like take a breath and i so and i put the camcorder started recording and tried to gain composure i could see the direction it was going and i mean so and i'm at the point of the strip mine where all the tears had made this turn and everything went down this way. So I'm, this thing was up on the two tiers above me going that way. I got up to there, what well, was filming that way, and, up, and the two tiers above that, I saw all of a sudden I just hear to my left, the only thing I can explain is if you take like one of St Snuffy's giant carvings, his biggest ones, and if you dropped it down the hill and let it gravity take it down, something was coming right at me. And I'm just like, oh, beep. And I <laughs> take my camera and I'm just like, oh my God, what the, you know, like I was losing it. And uh, well, I mean, I could hear this something in the woods, but I couldn't see it because I was so inexperienced with my camcorder. I'm trying to zoom in as far as I can. And of course, it, you know, when you zoom in up a hillside, you don't know where you're looking at. And anytime I'm thinking I'm seeing something, here's what I did. I could go like this with my naked eye, mm -hmm. thinking I wanted to see it with my eyes instead of through the viewfinder. Well, then I'd have to try to find it, but you'd hear it. And, uh, you know, lo and behold, I managed to catch some on video. It peeked around the tree at me a few times. But, uh, but I mean, just to, you know, just to say that after seeing one, it really sold me on the idea that all these people from different backgrounds, different just levels of intelligence from the dumbest, and I'm not saying anyone's dumb, but what I mean from the lowest educated to the people with the PhDs, because let's face it, all of us that have had a sighting, we're all, it's all, we're all variables. It's just that some of us are the, considered Einstein. Other people are considered SpongeBob. But I mean, <laughs> but that doesn't mean SpongeBob's not credible is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. So all these country folk that I had interviewed over the years that I kind of question sometimes, you know, is, is this legit? You know, I learned something that day that these people, so at least some of them were telling the truth. Mm -hmm. And you know how any puzzle is? As long as you have all the pieces, you're eventually going to be able to get it put together. I mean, it could be a super difficult one. And unfortunately, with Sasquatch in pieces, his pieces constantly change because he has no loyalties. He has no, hey, I live right on the edge of this pavilion and that's my turf. Because if Bigfoots did do that, that would be a big time fault and we would find one very easily, just mm -hmm. like a grizzly bear. A grizzly mm -hmm. bear is very territorial. A dominant male has his turf. Well, when a when a grizzly bear attacks someone, how long do you think it takes the park service to find the bear? Not too long, mm -hmm. because they figure out which one it is, and they know where it usually hangs, and they find it quickly and move it in or eliminate it, whatever they do. But, uh, but so yeah, I mean, that's pretty much what what made me start really seriously taking Bigfoot in Ohio to the next level, and that's why. You know, through the Ohio Conference and working with Don Keating with that, and uh, and other people, and just growing the the brand and the and the idea. You know that we can have things like we have this today, and what we had all weekend. And, you know, we had three days of this epic fun, epic camaraderie, friendship, meeting new people, and you know, and that's what's all that's what it's all about. I mean, this needs to be a fun thing to do mm -hmm. this needs to be a happy forum this there doesn't there's no need for you know uh personal confrontations there's no need to saying oh you're on my you're researching in my turf don't mm -hmm. go there on oh, believe me i mean henry can knows this remember all the turf wars i mean even in ohio like what does it matter if anything i'll tell you right now if you want to go have a bigfoot encounter 
I'm not saying you will, but I will take State Route 83, go, go right into Cambridge, downtown Cambridge, take 209 right to 83, turn right on 83 and go north. When you go down the hill, it'll say, right, you'll, you'll see Wills Creek Lake, you'll cross the bridge, it'll say, welcome to Coshocton County, that road right there to the right is County Road 410. Make a right-hand turn, drop down into the wildlife area. If you get to the first dirt road on the left, you've gone too far, you'll see a high wall to your left, stop to the left, walk 600 yards up in there, that's where it happened. Please go there, please see one. I mean, have a sighting. You know, I was very lucky, I was very fortunate. It's, you know, it's like winning the lottery, but in terms of, oh, I'm not telling you where, where it is, that's public property. Mm -hmm. Go there, do all you want, go anywhere you want. Mm -hmm. I mean, the only, in most cases, I mean, unless you have private property, kind of like B. Mills talk at the conference, you know, that was someone's, that's someone's private property. You have to respect that. Now that's understandable where I can't sit there and tell you where that is because there's people that live there and over where that's taking place, those people really will shoot you and eat you. So, oh, trust me. I mean, when the new, they, that's why they very rarely get new postal workers because if the new one, there's a substitute, boom. I don't know. They're on my property. I mean, so that's why they, they get real scared. But uh, yes. Okay. You didn't have to have anyone permission to go on the property for certain counties i went to the door <laughs> I didn't uh -huh. yes I didn't, have to. I didn't have to have that permission to go on their property but i did <laughs> yes yes mm -hmm. and, that, and that's a real good thing i mean i think one thing and in, in one one good thing about the project that that b and i have been working on is that we literally went door to door we took some of the locals there that we knew came with us, so those people saw that we knew these people. And then once we explained to them what our projects and what we were doing, they uh, were much more open, even though most of them didn't believe in anything. But they still at least gave us permission to come on the property, which was which was great, and to have access to these some of these private lands. And you know, folks. Those are the territories. Those are the areas, especially like east of the Mississippi, where I think. You, you know, these Bigfoots are really smart and take advantage of because a lot of this private property has no trespassing signs everywhere. Mm -hmm. And, uh, or like that sign B had in her presentation, yeah. trespassers will be shot, get back up, you'll get shot again. <laughs> I mean, so, so yes. I mean, one thing I will, uh, you know, say is that, you know, find your place, find your, find your location and work it hard, be consistent, you know, uh, if you have to pack a gun, do it. I don't advise it because I don't own. I don't carry a gun at all. I wouldn't. I don't even own a gun. But uh, but you have to have fun doing it, and uh, you have to learn. And this is an educational experience. And you know what? You got to get everyone involved, and, and and find yourself a good network of people you can work with, people that you can trust, and so you guys can work the area thoroughly and efficiently, and uh, you know, and have a good time doing it. So so anyways, uh, let's see what time we got here. Does anyone know? Two. Okay, we're going to be having a, a family-friendly hike here that will be part of the park, park, parking lot here at 2. Um, you can follow me in the van. It's not far from here. It's literally five minutes. We're going to go park in another parking lot. It's about a two-mile, one mile, one way in, one mile out. Just a nice little nature trail we're going to go on. And, uh, you know, give, go stretch our legs if you want to and just have some fun. And you can ask questions and anything like that. So, so. Anyways, I would like to thank you all for coming. If you have any questions, please feel free to fire away. And, uh, you know, uh, next year, May 4th, 2019, will be the Ohio Bigfoot Conference uh, 2019. And Woo! then September 28th and 29th of this year will be the Hocking Hills Bigfoot Conference. And if you're interested in that, just go to Facebook, type in Hocking Hills Bigfoot Conference, like the page, and you'll start getting updates on it. Um, it's a great event. Uh, it's for a charitable cause it's for Camp Odiaqua, Big Brothers, Big Sisters of Ohio. Last year, uh, we raised over four thousand dollars for them, and uh, you know we're hoping to raise more this year for them. Hope for maybe break the five thousand dollar level, and uh, you know, and hopefully, with all of you attending, uh, it will be a huge success. Uh, so, once again, any questions, fire away. If not, you guys have a great afternoon. Woo!
the Russia and the UK He showed up there to see what they had to say But those Londoners, they looked down their nose But those Russian scientists, they looked very close Yeah, they took the film to Russia and the UK That film got shown on the TV It got written up in magazines like Argosy It made an impression on our conscious minds It made an impression of the lasting kind Yeah, the film got shown on the TV Roger and Bob, they run out that day And their lives changed in every way Well, so did ours, cause we got to see A living Bigfoot walking tall and